Prova, prova. e vediamo com'è Madam, sir, the ship lies at anchor off New Eden. A tender stands at your disposal. Dreamed of clouds, great long fluffy bastards, low over the sea. I dreamed of the abyss, in the darkest reaches of the deepest ocean. Good day to you, my love. And a good day to you too. Are we in New England. <sighs> Welcome to America. Something's bothering you. Charles's letter. What of it? The ghost must be uncommonly dangerous, or he would banish it himself. The initial charge in double. I'm serious. If the Reverend needs help, this can be no easy business. Red, you best be ready. I'll be careful, Master Duarte. Your apprentice stands ready to serve. Yeah, we need to go. Night be. <laughs> Rory McWraith, gallant to the last. Life to the living, death to the dead. Consider our lovers, Antea and Red, the greatest banishers I ever knew. Life to the living, we say and death to the dead. It is not so simple. Since the dawn of humanity, the dead have lingered. Dead as alive, we are complex and emotional beings. Many and tangled are the ties that bind. Since the beginning of memory, banishers have fought to sever those ties. Death is but a trifle. Un secondo. to us all, to haunt or be haunted. There lies the true horror. I, Charles Davenport, should know it. The haunting of New Eden scared me to death. I dearly wish I had not begged my friends to come and lift the curse.
If this is June, I'd hate to see January. I'd want to freeze my backside off in the summertime. I'd have stayed in Scotland. London wasn't much better. Look at it. It's cold as a bishop's arse. And twice as white. I don't mind saying it, I'm very disappointed. Charles wasn't lying. New Eden is cold as death. You may well be disappointed. at the tavern with a hot grog or two I'm weary of long, boring sea voyages to grim, faraway lands. I can't remember the last time we did something else than work. After this, we should set sail somewhere warm and safe. The dead don't linger. No such place. But it's not a bad idea. how grim this place is. I heard you the first time, but I don't disagree. I think we can get through here. Sure. Let's go traipsing through the rotten, falling down house. Looks steady enough. going. I'll find a way to meet up with you. Over-eager apprentices. I can break my way through here. A sneaky wanderer. You? See, I managed. 
Are these specters watching the road? Maybe. But are they keeping people outside town? Or are they keeping them in? Wanderers. Behind you. As easy as falling off a box. Can't tell how long you keep your head. The original settlers, perhaps. Whoever, this doesn't bode well. just a few days ago. What exactly is going on here? badly for the case. Situation is worse than you thought. Let's wait to hear what Charles has to say. Empty docks in a growing settlement. Never a good sign. Are the town selectmen sitting on their arses? Isn't that what selectmen do? When we get to town, we may need to split up to cover more ground. 
You may count on the most responsible student a banisher could have. We'll see if you remember some of your teaching. If you're up for it. Always. Who the hell bumps their own cat? People who fear pestilence or disease. Or both. Well, how very biblical. Not the busiest stables I've ever seen. No ostler and no horses. If they burned their crops and ran out of food, then they probably ate the horses. Find the inn. Let's find Charles. It'll be good to see Charles and Esther again. <laughs> Was you a lecture on the sanctity of marriage? word for a set of shackles. I'm sure folk here are just as open-minded as Charles. Good day, sir. You'll be Haskell's banishers, I take it. Antea Duarte. This is Red McRaith. Hugh Bachelor. The governor had me prepare the schoolhouse for your comfort. It has fallen out of use. Will that be all? We're expected at the tavern. Where might we find it? The King's Arm. You can't miss it for the lamps are lit. The school is now a bunkhouse, and the meeting house cold and dark, but the tavern shines yet. Well then, let us be thankful for small mercies. Where are the children? Several died of fever. We could see disaster coming. We thought we'd have to bury them all. We sent the children to safety. We sent them away. That can't have been easy. It can't be easy now. No. No, it is not. Farewell, Mr. Bachelor. And you may wish us luck. Good luck, then, to the both of you. I must take a moment by myself. Excuse me. Charlie, we're here. Your prayers are answered. Poor as a drink. Finally. Banish it. 
please come in. As it is called, your serving woman may sit while we talk. I'm the help. She's the boss. You're not Charles. My name is Antea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McGrath. Good day to you, sirs, madam. Now, where's Charles? Minister Davenport said help was on its way. I assume... Keep digging, Fairfax. Good day. Pennington, captain of the train band. This here is thick-skinned Newsmith. We're the selectmen. <laughs> What's left of us? Why is Charles not here? We are sorry for your loss. We'll do what we can for his widow. The Reverend is dead. When? How? A terrible tragedy. Though our faith sustains us, we are still very much in shock. Our shock at Reverend Davenport's killing is so great that we must sit here in comfort, losing precious time. As governor of the colony of New Eden, it is my responsibility. Oh, look at us, sat here waiting to meet the same fate. We could all be miles away by now. You lot do what you want. I intend living. The esteemed select woman can be <coughs> brusque. Forgive her. And rest assured that her aptitudes far outweigh her manners. Or lack thereof. Her point still stands, Fairfax. Sitting here, doing nothing, we are as lambs to the slaughter. The banishers are here. Surely, with their expertise, we may yet prevail. Then I shall leave you in your expertise in ghosts and devils to find out. My expertise in blood and battle is of little use. Mistress Duarte, if I can be of service, you may visit me at home. On the other side of the street, as it were. Well, Governor, shall you leave, or shall you stay? For myself, I'll stay. <clears throat> Our company has suffered terribly. But we are worth saving. And now that you are here, save it we shall. Please, accept my sincerest condolences for the loss of your friend. We feel the loss of our minister so very keenly. Charles Davenport was a man of great knowledge and devotion. The pride, indeed, of New Eden. It discommodes me greatly to remember how we found his body in the cemetery. Indeed, it distresses me yet further to tell you that we do not know what so tragically cost him his life. What do you think happened? I could guess to little use. It is evident, however, that Charles's unexpected death is linked to his investigation of the curse. In the minister's absence, I try, in all humility, to protect us all, body and soul, from our ongoing peril. You see, in my youth, I too was something of a demonologist. Rather a good one, if I say so myself. We're not demonologists, and neither was Charles. Is his widow Esther taking visitors? The widow Davenport is at home and does not much venture out. Her house overlooks the dock. I offered Charles a home with a view across a pretty meadow, but he refused. He preferred the village life. Speak to her, if she'll see you. But she knows no more than we do about how her husband died. Why is town so empty? Of those who did not die, we are the few who stayed. Though our motivations may differ, all who remain have shown extraordinary faith and courage in the face of our adversity. 
Those who left, where did they go? Boston, outlying settlements. Anywhere, everywhere. Although, as you may have heard, the weather has likely closed the roads. Some believe the pass through the dark woods offers salvation. I do not. I believe we must stand our ground. What can you tell me about the curse? I can tell you that it has been our misery for many long months now. And I can tell you that it worsens by the increment. First, there was pestilence and disease. Then came the nightmares. Then came madness. In the end came death. And death remains. But in all honesty, <laughs> I think the weather is the worst part. This never-ending winter hangs heavy on us all. Worse yet, it traps us here. What do you think caused the curse? In my humble opinion, I'll point to the obvious. The abyss disgorges its spawn upon New Eden, bent on making God's poor creatures suffer. As to the nature of the demon, that's what we're paying you to find out. Our late friend Charles faced a Herculean task and acquitted himself with honor. You will have to do far better than that, I'm afraid. Our contract stands. If you'll have it, yes. Our contract stands for Charles. All right, for Charles. You're a demonologist, you say? I am that, like my father was before me. Faith and science are our twin compasses, you see, to a deeper understanding of the secrets of God's green and pleasant land and those who threaten it. And what have your compasses told you about the curse? They have told me... They have told me that Reverend Davenport was better placed than I to solve our problem. Which is why you're here. We agreed it. I shall stand for the company, I said, as the moral authority, the anchor, and the rock, as Charles and his banishers lift the curse. Heroic work all round. Indeed it is, madam. Indeed it is. But we do it all the same. Because we must. Right. Because we must. Okay, I see you. Thank you. We have what we need. Then I wish you success. By my instruction, a room is prepared for you in the old schoolhouse. I'll be here if you need me. Cursed sea storms. If only we'd been here earlier. No, no. But as Charles would say, another day, another soul to save. These people are idiots if they believe prayer will save them. <laughs> Thick skin, right? We're sorry to disturb you. It'll take more than you to disturb me. What do you want? What's your role here, if you don't mind me asking? Lately, I do what needs doing when no one else will, weakened as they are by comfort and the curse. In normal times, I hunt. Now, though, it's cold enough to freeze the nankies off an horse. And the game rots as quick as you can get it home. You can't eat a ghost, 
can't skin it, can't sell it. So what will be the use? I take it you intend to leave town. Bloody right I do. New Eden is dying and anyone who stays is dead or deranged. Will you go alone? I'll take my sister and anyone else who wishes. You may come too if you wish. You look like you can handle yourself. There's no hope for New Eden then. Not till the weather changes and it don't look like changing. So, the curse. What do you think is going on? I think nothing much about it. I think folk sickened and the crops failed. I think folk went mad and I know we found the Reverend dead. What of the governor? Anything I should know? That useless clatwagger. With Davenport dead, godly folk look to be led. Fairfax Askell couldn't be happier. I pity he'll get them all killed. What of the captain? Now there's a man of worth. Without Saul Pennington, there'd be no town left at all. These last months have been hard on him. I hope his metal holds. If I had my way, he'd be coming with us. I don't give a rat's knacks for loyalty. The captain does. <laughs> well then, thank you for your help. Aye. We should go to Esther. I think the governor said that house stood above the docks. slept for fear you would not come. I'm at a loss. Would God even allow me to drag you into these... these dark times? Esther, you're not alone now. We're here. I'm so sorry we didn't get here on time. Truly. I know. Charles kept saying it. Have faith. They will come. If only he had kept his faith himself. What happened to him? Poor Charles. Just one more victim of the curse of New Eden. You know how he is. Was. Restless. Impatient. It's not that he gave up on you. His friends that he could wait no more. I believe he tried to lift the curse. I too have questions, but I have no answers. Nor do I now have a husband. Is there anything we should know about? Lord, deliver me, for I cannot endure this. I cannot endure it, and Charles does not deserve it. Anything at all, Esther. Please. I have felt Charles present about the house. His ghost lingers. He needs help. If he's here, I promise I will know no rest until he has his. You can count on us. We'll start with the house. Charles's papers are gathered in his office. Take what you need. Thank you, Esther. How were things? 
You know, before all this. Before the curse? It was a busy and exciting time. Charles immersed himself in the community here. He had a hand in everything. The people came to rely on him. I'm sure they look to someone else now, but I can't imagine it's the same. What can you tell me about the esteemed Governor Haskell? Fairfax Haskell is well-read and educated, but at times his back can be too stiff. He shares Charles's interest in the unknown, but his passion seems less than practical. He's an academic. Still, good to know our patron has some understanding of our work. We met the captain, too, along with the huntress, Thickskin. Do you know them? I find Thickskin knew Smith's manner a little frightening, but I think she has a good heart. A fine hunter, by all accounts. Captain Pennington comes with a reputation for soldiering. He comports himself with a wry dignity, but I suspect that beneath it all, he's just... sad. Charles thought so too. There are wounds beneath Saul Pennington's armor, he said, that time and God have not yet healed. Okay. We'll take a look around, if that's all right. May I be of any help? Mm, you stay put. We'll find the way. Cell. Could you find nothing better? These days I lack the heart to play. Can't believe you brought your piano forte to New England. It cost a fortune. But you cannot part a pianist from their beloved. Charles is still here and Esther is completely distraught. She lost him and now he's back. A ghastly figure. It must be unbearable. Faith always was his beacon in the darkness. In people as much as in God. He's a good man. I can still picture him crafting your very first Bane ring. You sound much more fond of the moment now than you were back then. Bit green for an actual haunting, you said. <laughs> you were. Still, you did all right. That's from the set he taught me with. I'd know it anywhere. Did he keep it to remind him of his favorite? Or to remind him that he had yet to beat me? Remember when he started to wear these to look wiser and older? <laughs> he was hiding his hair loss. Charles's notes mention Job, chapter 7, verses 13 to 15. I'll look for that reference. Red, you dropped something. Mm hmm. Yeah. 
Eh, perché Andre ho le cuffie nel, jo nel joystick per l'audio. Ma mi senti? Mi senti Andre? Charles always wore this brooch. His things are untouched. Nothing's moved. Comunque, giocatelo che che figo. Hanno detto tutti che è bellissimo e allora ha iniziato a portare eh, un'altra lettera. Lettera non spedita, lettera a sua sorella. Poi inizio comunque... <laughs> Esther couldn't attend Charles's burial. Poor woman. That's terrible for her. Esther never got to say farewell to Charles. Yeah, I could have made him manifest. Maybe, but there has to be more to it.
giorno che aspettiamo Pyrex comunque giochiamo anche al Drivers These notes are erratic ramblings. Charles was worried about the curse plaguing the settlers' dreams. How malicious is this curse tormenting people in the... Okay, I've found it. Benz. Charles's ghost might give us answers. We should investigate the cemetery where he was found. Are you leaving already? We need to investigate the cemetery. What will you do for my child? If he's present, we'll find him. Then... We'll ask him what he wants us to do. Must I see him too? First, let's find out what happened. After that, we'll see. Best get started. Time may be against us. Will you be all right? I doubt it, but I'll do my work all the same. We came here to help Charles and help Charles with Shell. Ask around. See what people will tell you. I'll go to the cemetery and do the same. Be careful. Hi. You too. Per trovare la posizione nel prossimo obiettivo apri la mappa con... Vabbè, era anche col tab, quindi non mi dava niente. Vabbè. Sì, sì, va bene. Ciao ciao